freedom to choose the jobs you want when you want. This video is sponsored by Avail Logistics. With the driver demand at an all time high, now is the time for drivers to come together and fight for fair conditions, more control, better rates and more freedom. This can be done through the Avail app. Avail wants to get rid of agencies so that drivers can get better wages, have control of where they work and choose their own work pattern. Want to know more? Download the Avail app today. Welcome to my channel. My name is Luke. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hopefully you are all okay. Today we are heading to Southampton. We're just going to pop into Tetbury and just get loaded. Um, could, be uh, could be pallets, could be bulk bags. I'm not entirely sure yet which one it is. Uh, we'll get one of them. We've also got an indicator out. <laughs> it's just gone. My indicator is just blown. Indicator truck right. So either the one on the front beneath me or the one behind me on the right is gone. One or the other. Okay, well, that's something else we can do. Um, we, yeah, like I said, we're going to get loaded from Tetbury now and we're going to head to Southampton. But we've got to make a stop via the yard because we actually got an issue with the trailers leaking air quite a lot of air actually. Um, so we've just done a delivery this morning in Stonehouse. Uh, that's where I've noticed the air leak. So now we're sort of making our way back to the yard um, via this collection point first. It's not um, an issue that's going to keep me off the road because I'm, as long as I've got air pressure, that's fine. And under idling, I maintain air pressure in the truck. So it's perfectly fine. But it does need to be looked at because if it gets worse, then I'm going to lose air pressure whilst driving. Um, so it's just something to keep an eye on. If I were to lose pressure, it would tell me on the dash before um, before anything happens. And then um, the worst thing that would happen would be <laughs> the wheels lock up on the trailer. So we don't want that happening, which is why we're keeping an eye on the air pressure. But uh, as I said, at the moment, it's maintaining it itself very well. Just watch the vehicle pass. Ah, we've got bin lorry in front. Oh. Pretty sure this bin lorry spins round up the top of the road where we want to turn right as well. A little bit annoying. Anyway, yes, thank you for watching. We've just reached 70,000 subscribers as well on YouTube, so thank you very much. I really, really do appreciate that. Um, my ultimate aim is to get 100,000 subs. I've said that from day one. To get to get a YouTube plaque would be amazing. And my daughters keep asking me actually, do I have a YouTube plaque yet? For those of you who don't know, you get a uh, I think it's a silver button. It's basically YouTube sends you. A, a, a plaque, a frame, if you like, with a play button, just to say congratulations on reaching 100,000 subs. That is my aim. I don't think I'll get it this year, but I'm hoping to get it by maybe next year. Maybe, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see on that one. I'm just, I'm just happy with what I've got. Um, I do appreciate everyone watching me. So thank you, thank you very much. Right, yes, yeah, so the bin lorry's going to stop right here. Let's pick up this bin. We can't pass while he's doing this. Pretty sure, like I said, they spin round at the top where we want to turn right. You can't have a go at the bin men or women. You never know what sex they are. Um, because without them, we'd all be screwed. We all need bin collections, don't we? So uh, they've got a job to do, just like I do. So you can't be mad with them. Right, and then we want to turn right. Is he spinning round? Or is he going straight on? Yeah, it's hazards are on. Look. I need to get this bulb changed when I go back to the yard. He's spinning around there, look. Lovely. It must be because he knows I'm here, so I think normally they do spin around in this one. This road's a bit bumpy, isn't it? Anyway, we're here. We're, I'm hoping it's going to be all pallets. That would be very nice if it's all pallets. Uh, because it's a bit miserable outside, as you can see. It was lashing down with rain just, just now. Um, I don't really want to be sorting out the net in the wet weather. Plus, I'm still recovering from a bad back. Those of you who don't know, um, on my social media page I put out yesterday, uh, I've actually been off work for 
uh, three days with a bad back. I pulled my back or something over the weekend. Oh my God, it was an agony, absolute agony. Uh, I'm, I'm okay now to drive, um, but bending over does a little bit. So yeah, I was at a cheerleading competition with my youngest daughter and I may have got a bit excited and jumped up and danced and stuff. <laughs> I think by the end of the day, I just wore myself out basically. I'm getting old, old and overweight. <laughs> Right, uh, let's go get paperwork. I shall see you in a little while. Uh, before I get the paperwork, like, you can hear the hissing. Yeah, they've got an air leak somewhere on the trailer. Basically, there are wires underneath. I don't know if you can see. Oh. So one of those wires, or even maybe an air chamber, it's just got a small leak in it, causing that air to come out. So, uh, yeah. Gotta go get it looked at before we travel too far. Ooh, hiccups. Okay, we've got the paperwork. We're just waiting to uh, to be let in. We're going to Sydney's in, um, well, they call it Totten. Been there loads of times. Well, back in the day, I went there loads of times. Uh, so yeah, I know exactly where that is. We've only got 25, uh, sorry, 21 in total going on. It's three pallets and then 18 bags. So not much at all. It's gonna be half a load and uh, it's going to take us 2 hours and 17 minutes to get there, but we also do need to do a couple of stops. We need to stop in the yard, which is here. Don't know how long we're going to be there for, could be there for now. We also need to get some fuel as well, because um, we're on the low. So I'm going to stop. There's a BP garage just after Cricklade. Uh, so yeah, we're going to stop at the BP garage on the way, then stop at the yard, and then we'll carry on going down. So yeah, by the time we actually get everything sorted, yeah, we're probably going to be looking at like, probably 1 o'clock-ish, 2 o'clock-ish, something like that. And then I think it's back to the yard from there, I think. So yeah, we're just waiting to be called in, get loaded. Unfortunately, we do have to get the net out, so we're gonna get a little bit wet. And uh, yeah, but it's only 18 bags or something I said, wasn't it? So not many to go on. Okay, and just like that, we are loaded. So we've got three pallets on, the rest of them are bolt bags. You can still just about hear the hissing. We're gonna head back to the yard now. It might be a case it doesn't actually get fixed at the yard. Uh, as long as it's looked at and it's sort of themed too for us, but it's not right. We'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, let's crack on back to the yard, see in a bit. Okay, we're back in the yard now. I uh, just about to change a bulb on the uh, on the old uh, hazard light. Yeah, we're back in the yard. Just going to get it looked at. Luckily, we right next door to us is a company called Swindon Trailers. They specialise in, uh, in the fixing and trailers, so I think they're going to take a look at it. Right, you join me reversing it in to the bay to be looked at. The trailer, I mean. Just watching it in. We do have someone watching us, but I'm also trying to keep it in the lines. because we do have an open pit <laughs> beneath us. How far in are we going? That I do. Lovely. Right. Bit of, should we leave the engine on? I don't know. Got the engine off. Audio, mate. Right, we'll let, her, let him do that, and uh, I will see you in a little while. Okay, this is the part of the video where we talk about the Essential New Truckers Handbook by Malcolm Green. I promise you, if you want to know anything regarding HGVs or, or working hours or anything like that, then you need to purchase this book because everything is in it. Uh, and if you are already a HGV driver and you think you already know about all this sort of stuff, buy it anyway because it's going to refine your existing skills. The Essential New Truckers Handbook by Malcolm Green. Link in the description down below. Go buy yourself a copy now. There we go, being looked at now. Got to get it fixed. Like I said, luckily it's just literally right next door. That's one of our trailers. And uh, our bit's here. It's very handy. Okay, truck is done. We've been here longer than I expected, actually. <laughs> We've still got to get a break in as well on the way down. But as you can hear, no hissing. There was hissing right now. Truck is on, air is building up. 
no hissing. The problem has been fixed. That's what we do at the Harry and Sons. We fix the issues. Um, so yeah, got back in the truck. Um, like I said, it's so handy that we've got Swindon traders right next door. But we're going to jump in the truck now. Crack on down to Southampton. We've only got an hour as we have a driving time left before we need to have half an hour break. And then from there, it's just back to the yard again. So not too bad. Lovely jumping. Right, you join me in Southampton. We've just come off the M27. Yeah, M27 is what we've just come off at. We are now about to go onto the A35. Indicate left. Do have a tanker lorry on my left side. But we should be okay. It's been a while since I've been down here, actually. But both these lanes go in to the right-hand side. I know that. Um... So yeah, I've delivered to this uh, Totten branch before. So you go past it, you sort of spin around at a roundabout, come back on yourself, turn left, maybe left again, can't remember. But it's just, you go around up a corner, around a bend, and then it's on the left. <laughs> I've done loads of videos um, while I was here, but obviously ages ago. So I'm going very slow. Let's get on over. Um, I did change my bulb, but it's blown again. Hence, you can hear the tick, 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 So yeah, that's very annoying. I did change it earlier, but it's uh, it's blown again. I think I may have an issue with um, with the cluster itself, as opposed to the bulb being blown. So yeah, obviously we have to get that looked at. Luckily, we're okay because we got flashing lights on the front of the truck and flashing lights on the rear of the trailer. So um, I think legally we're okay. I think. Um, but uh, it has been noted, it's been defected, so that'll be looked at on the weekend, I, I would imagine. But yeah, we're only two miles away now from where we need to be, so we're just going to crack on there. Used to do, <laughs> used to be down Southampton all the time with the containers, getting out, getting in places like this. The container work was very easy work, but it was also very long hours, because most of the time you were either sat on a bay doing nothing, or you were sat on... The, the, the like the docks doing nothing basically there's a lot of doing nothing <laughs> that's why a lot of um, container lorries are clean because that's what people do they spend their time cleaning their trucks um, as I did believe it or not because there's nothing else to do there's only so much Netflix you can do do you know what I mean then you get bored so yeah that's why you see an awful lot of very clean container lorries because they got time to clean them but yeah Southampton man it used to be like a, like almost a second home I was down here so much earlier on in my career so obviously it's getting on for a while now like three four years ago that i was here a lot every day i used to be based out of here those of you who have uh, been with me long enough will have remember when i was working for jk transport i did a lot of work for day aggregates we were based down in the southampton area i used to night out every day well i come home on a wednesday normally to try and break up the week which worked very well actually but um but yeah no used to enjoy being down to Southampton, must admit. Anywho, so the roundabout coming up is where we want to spin round at, so we're going to get into the round side lane. And another reason why I think it's the cluster and not the bulb that's blown is because it was working fine when I left, all the way, then it stopped working, and then it was working fine again, and now it's not working again, so it's not a bulb, it's something electrical or the cluster itself needs replacing, I'm not sure, we need to go down there on the round side. That's what, uh, just saw a police car. Not sure if they've closed the road or not. And we're just going to get over on the left here because we want to turn left. I don't want to keep the trailer out in the road longer than necessary. Because there is there's traffic right behind me in my lane. Right. Yeah, there is a police car here. Is it closed? There's vehicles coming out. I was going to say, I swore I saw a police car. Can I get around the bend? That's the question. Yeah, I shouldn't, right? I think someone's parked it there. It looks like someone's parked the car right there. Nice. We're around, we're around, we're around. That's good. Uh, and then Sidham's is up on the left somewhere. We just pull straight in, park up on the right-hand side, if I remember correctly, there it is. And then uh, we drive on round. Is 
So yeah, take a left in here. We've got a truck in here, look. One of their own, a couple of their own. And uh, we just park up here on the right so vehicles can get past us. And we sort of go around on the right hand side and get tipped. None of these forklifts wanted to speak to me, so we'll just stop here for a second and uh, see if we can get some information. There's no one in that truck. Let's see what they say. Okay, so he's saying ugh, that it should be empty. Oh, that hurt my back. <laughs> So we'll just drive on in and find out. I don't see a lorry. I think that's a skip, okay. It's very tight around here. I'm not going to make that corner. There was a car on my left. Let's take it a little bit wider. Is he moving the pallet or no? Just lifted my mid lift axle up as well, just so I can get a, a sharper turn. Let's try again. We're as tight on the left as we can go. Better. Didn't take it quite wide enough. This trailer has uh, got no rear steer on it, <laughs> so uh, it don't follow you around quite as easy as uh, some other trailers do. Come on, mate. In the middle, like so. Lovely, doubly. Right, I'm going to take the net off, take the straps off, and then uh, show you the load. See you in a bit. Right, bags are coming off. They're not necessarily coming off in order, but they are coming off. <laughs> So, just delivering. I'm on the lookout for pebbles because when I buy me a, buy my new house, I want to actually put some nice pebbles in. These look quite nice. Just spoke to the forklift driver. They're called flamingo pebbles, and uh, well, yeah, they are, they do look nice. And that bag is 160 pound. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe you go for the cheap bark instead. <laughs> just uh, one more pallet left to come off, and then that's it. We're done then. Happy days. Right, just waiting for some air to build up. We've sorted the air leak out Ugh. on the trailer, but the Susie's also got a very small leak, a very small leak, but when you're uh, out and about, the uh, the air does go a little bit, not enough to, uh, to warrant being looked at right now. But again, it is something to be looked at at some point. It's known about with the company, which we're gonna go home. I think we just go back the way we come, you know, <laughs> M4. Right, let's try and get out of here. Yeah, I do like coming here. The forklift driver, one of, well, one of them, just tipped me. He said, oh, hello, God bless you, neighbors. Uh Looks like I used to come here all the time. Back in day. I've got no idea why I did that accent. 
Right, let's try and get out of here. Mid lift axle up. We've got some cars on the left that we don't want to hit. Should be enough to get out. Yeah, those pebbles, they do look quite nice actually. 160 quid a bag, that bag there, around the front. They do, they do actually look quite nice. I'm contemplating. We ain't got a house yet, but if we did get the house, I am contemplating purchasing. All right, let's get out of here. Get around this corner. No, uh, no steering axle on the trailer, as I said earlier. So um, some of these corners are a little bit tight for a truck, but we can get out. Loads of room. Loads of room. That's the one here. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's the forklift driver. Um, he's a really friendly chap. I, um, he used to tip me all the time when I used to come here. Back in the day, he said, have you been banned from anywhere else? <laughs> he goes, last time I saw you, you were banned from Travis Perkins. I was like, ah, actually, funny you say that. There's a company in Birkenhead. <laughs> they banned me. And he's like, um, oh, why'd they ban you? It's silly, do you know what I mean? I told him. It's because I said the forklift driver wanted to kill someone. But he didn't seem too upset about it himself, so, yeah. Never mind. Anyway, it's that car is still parked there, look. You can see, the black car. I think the police have gone now. There's no police car behind it. Don't pull out. But I wonder if there's a sign on it saying police aware or something like that. Looks like it's been there a while. No signs on it to say the police are, are aware, so yeah, never mind. Go left out of here. Lovely. Right, so the plan now is I'm probably going to see you in the morning because it's uh, well, it's only half past two now in the afternoon, but we're done for the day. All we've got to do now is go back to the yard, be there for four o'clock and uh, drop this trailer. That's all we've got to do. So yeah, drop the trailer in the yard, meet Rich somewhere. I think we're going to meet him somewhere at the bottom of Birdlip Hill, somewhere along one of the bridges down there. He is supposed to have tomorrow off, from what I can tell. He's booked off his holiday, but he's going to run out of driving time today, unfortunately. So he's not going to make it all the way back to the yard. Um, so it's a case of meeting up with him tomorrow morning. He's going to drop the trailer. I'm going to pick it up. I'll carry on down to Newton Abbott. I'm sure Newton Abbott is... Is it Cornwall? Is Newton Abbott in Cornwall? Okay, I found this on the web for his Newton Abbott. No, it's Devon. Check it out. It's, it's Devon. Um, yeah, got that wrong, didn't I? Sorry, sorry, Cornish people and Devonish people. Newton Abbott is in Devon, so we're going. We're going down into Devon tomorrow. Pick up the trailer from uh, from Brockworth. I think it's Brockworth Bypass, A four one seven. Pick up the trailer, head down to Newton Abbott, and then tomorrow I believe we're coming back up to Tetbury and reloading that trailer for Monday for Rich, which will be a curtain side of trailer. Come back to the yard. Uh, or it could be b right actually loading it. Come back to the yard, drop the trailer, hitch up to my flatbed trailer and get that loaded for Monday as well. So tomorrow is going to be a day of delivering someone else's load and loading their trailer and my trailer as well ready for Monday. So we call that the yard bitch. <laughs> but it's cool. Um, pays the bills, doesn't it? Pays the bills. And it gets everyone set ready for Monday. Uh, so we can just head straight off. Gets everyone ahead. Ahead for the week. So yes, um, I think we're probably going to end this part of the video here. And come off here. And I, no, I'll see you in the yard before we go. Because then I'll probably see you in the yard again in the morning, so, or something like that. So, we'll see, but I'll see you back in the yard. Right, we are back in the yard. It is four o'clock now, bang on. There's someone coming in with check pallets. Not what it was. Um, the guy who we're supposed to be doing a trailer swap with He's still an hour away from his destination, uh, so he's not actually going to get there until five o'clock this afternoon. Uh, so it's looking un unlikely that he's going to get loaded. So I don't know what the plan is. So I'm going to stay hitched up to this trailer for now, this flatbed that I got on, because it's looking like I'll be doing something else tomorrow morning now if he can't get loaded. Um, or on the off chance that he does get loaded, he's in for a late night to come back as far as he can. Um, We'll just see. If I got to if I got to run hitch in the morning, I'll unhitch in the morning. Not a problem. But yeah, just spoken to Rich, spoken to the boss. Nothing else I can do from here. So um, yeah, we are going to 
get ourselves sorted and go home for the evening. Oh well, yeah, well, I've just decided to walk in a puddle. That was nice of me, wasn't it? <laughs> Big old puddle there. Um, so yeah, uh, just leave the trailer here for now. Uh, and in the morning we will um, drop it if needed or use it if needed. We'll have to wait and see. But for now, we're going home. I will see you in the morning. See you in a bit. Okay. Welcome. It is the next morning. We're just walking back to the lorry now. And uh, yeah, so we found out yesterday, Rich unfortunately didn't get loaded. So there is no load, no trailer to go and hitch up to. So uh, it's a good job we didn't unhitch yesterday because we are now using the trailer we had yesterday. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're going to keep that one. Let's walk back to the truck now. So obviously because we've not got to go and pick up the trailer, our job has changed today as well. We were originally going to be going down into Devon with, uh, with a curtain slider, but now we're staying, we're staying sort of relatively local now. So we're going to stay on the flatbed. We're going to go to South Cerny, get loaded with like roofing tiles. That's going to go to Leighton Buzzard. And then from Leighton Buzzard, we're going to Banbury, get loaded with pallets, I believe. Um, well, it will be, because then that's going to go to Chep in Swindon and that's our plan today, so here she is. We're gonna get her turned on now, do some data checks, and then get a move on. Gotta keep an eye on this hazard light because I've not done anything since yesterday, but as you can see, it's working. <laughs> um, the bulb that I tried changing yesterday didn't do anything. So I think it's something to do with the unit itself, but I think as long as the one on the trailer is working as well, I think it doesn't matter if it goes out because we've still got one on the back of the vehicle. That, that kind of don't really matter so much as long as the one on the back's working, as far as I'm aware. So, yeah, we're just going to carry on doing our daily checks, make sure everything's all right, and then carry on. Lights-wise, okay on this side as well. Lovely. Just checking each tyre now, make sure they're all insulated. Right, daily checks done. We are now going to crack onto South Cerny. You've seen it loads of times, so I see when we're there, when we're loaded, that we'll crack onto Leighton Buzzard. Again, you've seen that as well. <laughs> uh, but where we're getting loaded that later in Banbury, never been there before, so we, we'll do that. We're gonna be getting them, look, pallets, just like that. Look at the cars decided to stop right in front of the line. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna crack on, get a move on. Today's Friday, so we kind of like, the earlier we start, the earlier we finish, and uh, it's uh, quarter seven nearly now anyway, so we're gonna crack on, get to South Cerny, and go and get loaded. Okay, it started raining, so I put, put my hoodie on, but it's stopped raining now. <laughs> right, so we are loaded and we are strapped. We've got some pallets on the front as well, which need taken. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten either side, just 20 pallets to settle. And as per usual, we got, uh, all the pallets on the back of the tailor as well. So yeah, we're gonna go grab the paperwork now, head on over to Leighton Buzzard and uh, crack on with the day. Hopefully we'll be there, it's about two and a half hours, give or take. So we'll be there well before lunchtime. Uh, hopefully out before lunchtime as well. Maybe even in Banbury by lunchtime. That's where we're heading after Leighton Buzzard, Banbury. Right, let's go get our paperwork. Right, you join me in Leighton Buzzard, where, to be honest, it just has not stopped raining. We've got to go and offload in this rain. Not going to be fun. Well, I say offload, we've got to unstrap. I think they've changed the rules. It used to be that you drove in, got your load checked, and then you go to the area and get um, take your straps off in that area. But last time I was here, I saw signs saying no one strapping here. So I think now we've got to unstrap before we get the load checked, I think. You might be able to hear the indicator's gone wrong again. I checked this morning. Daily checks, indicator worked. It's on camera. Indicator worked. Yesterday I changed a bulb. Didn't do anything. It's not a bulb. It's a uh, an electrical issue by the looks of it. But I've still got one working on the back of the trailer, so it's all good. It's all good. It's all gravy, baby. But uh, yeah, no, it's a bit wet out. I'm gonna get wet. I've got my waterproof coat. I'm gonna have to put on. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts as well because it's quite warm. It's nine and a half degrees, so. It's definitely shorts weather. <laughs> just gonna get wet. Don't wanna get wet. Um, the time is just shy of 10 a.m. 
So I'm hoping we can get this off and get to Banbury by about 12 o'clock-ish. That's what I'm hoping. Say, say we're there for an hour. I don't think we'll be there for an hour, to be honest. Um, yeah, all going well. We could be back in Swindon for like three o'clock. But then we could be in Chep in Swindon for like four hours because uh, you could be there for a long time sometimes. It looks a bit flooded here, doesn't it? When you're ready, Bin Laurie, you've got to move over to get the turn. Nothing coming, it's all clear. All clear. Got to take that one nice and wide. Bit of a bit of a sharp one. Ah, I don't know if that quarry's always. Oh yeah, it's always been there. What am I thinking? I was going to say I don't think it's always been there, but it definitely has. <laughs> so I've been getting a few comments recently saying show more driving, show more driving. I'm trying. I'm trying to show more driving, but I'll be honest. There's only so much I can say without saying boring stuff <laughs> or having nothing interesting to say whatsoever then it'd just be silence and uh, that's that to me is not interesting so I'm not go gonna just drive for miles and miles and then not talk um, but then equally you know I gotta I gotta be careful how much I film because if I run out of stuff to say then it just won't be interesting to listen to so I like to try and make my videos interesting at least try to whoever they are or not it's a different matter but i tried to keep them interesting right let's turn right into here leighton buzzard leighton buzzard uh it doesn't doesn't look too busy uh then again it does look a little bit busy now i've said that this car's going very slow it's flashing me in I am not sure there's anywhere for me to actually unstrap. Yeah, okay, it is actually quite busy in here. Looking at it. They've, uh, they've got three rows to unstrap, but, um, well, three bays, I should say, but all three bays are being used currently, so I think we'll just go and get the load checked off first and then maybe unstrap it at the top, if it's at the top. If it's at the bottom here, then, yeah, we'll be able to. That sounds like a good plan. Let's do that. Let's go get the load checked off first. And go from there. Let's put some beacons on. Lovely. And then put our high vis on as well before we go but yeah if we uh, if we've got to go around there to the right then i might be able to unstrap over there but at the bottom bit last time i was here down there on the left they said no one's strapping so let's go see what they say right i'll see you in a bit right we're unstrapped we've been told to sit down in here <laughs> but but before we do I've got to pack some stuff away because I don't want to be uh, wearing my high vis and sitting down. So I know you're a bit wonky. My high vis is all wet, so uh, yeah. Just gonna take it off. Ideally, it could do with being dried, really, but it's going to get wet again later. So we'll just put it up there for now. Lovely. Then we're told to sit down on our passenger seat, but we can't do that because we've got stuff in the footwear. So we'll do the next best thing. That's on the bunk. <laughs> right, we are tipped. Seatbelts stuck in the door. We are tipped. There's a lot of dust. A lot of dust in my handle. I, um, I need to clean this truck, give it a wipe over today when I finish. It's a bit dusty in areas. Um, right, seatbelt on. Seatbelt on. What's going on with the seatbelt? Here we go. Here we go. Right, so, as it can come off, they're annoying me. We need to put our destination in. Luckily, I've already put it into the sat-nav whilst waiting. Yeah, let's go that way. 
cool. Right, so we're going to be at Banbury for 20 to 12, which is good. I can't see us being loaded in 20 minutes, so we won't be gone by 12. Um, all I know is we are picking up pallets. Don't know how many pallets or what type of pallets. Sometimes you pick up Euro pallets and oh, they're just, they're more annoying to strap up because the straps get um, sort of wedged in between the slats because they load them, it's hard to explain. Rather than loading parallel to the trailer, so the slats are parallel, they, they sort of twist them round so they're loaded the other way. So as you throw a strap over, it gets stuck between the, the slats on the top, if that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, that's kind of the best way I can describe it. <laughs> um, basically, it's really hard. If you throw a strap over and it gets caught on like the far left-hand side of the pallet, it's, it's harder to whip it back over so it's in the middle of the pallet, that's all. So it's just a bit more of a nightmare to, to strap up. And also when it comes to unstrapping, you've got to tug down more to get it off because it gets like wedged in between the slats basically. So yeah, if it is um, Euro pallets, we obviously we still take them, but it's just a little bit more annoying. Of course, uh, there's no guarantee it's even going to be a full load of pallets. I've gone to collect pallets from companies before and it's just been like 20 pallets, <laughs> hardly anything. Uh, or it could be an entire full load. We just we just don't know. It's more likely to be in a, a, a full load, but we don't know how many pallets it's going to be until we get there. And then, as I briefly mentioned earlier, um, we could still be in Swindon by three o'clock, but um, we could be at Chep for hours waiting to be tipped. So we have to see how it goes on that one. It's really hard to judge. Um, even like even today on a Friday, it's hard to tell my wife roughly what time I'll be home because even though I'm only in Chep in Swindon and I'm local, you know, and I'm only sort of from that point, in, from Chep, I'm 15 minutes away from the yard. Um, so I'm very close to home base, but we can't give an estimate of when we're going to be there because we just don't know. Um, you can, you, uh, you can kind of estimate a little bit. I say, and it's just my personal preference at Chep, it's a good 20 minutes a truck. So if you know you're sort of six in the line in, in queuing up to get in, you know you're there for two hours because it's going to take a good 20 minutes per truck. Um, sometimes you can be queuing up all the way onto the road and then it's, um, well, it could be like four hours to get in. I could go, but I'm going to be taking up most of this road, so I'm just waiting for this car to come on down. Still clear to the left. Come on, mate. I'm literally waiting for you. Thank you. So as you see, look, my trailer's just on their side of the road for a long time on this turning. On the way in, we had to get on the other side of the road, didn't we, to, to make it in. So yeah, we'll, um, we'll be in Banbury in about an hour's time, get loaded, and then we crack on to Swindon. Um, obviously, if we are in Chep in Swindon for a long time, say we're there for a couple of hours, so it's gone five o'clock, we won't be getting loaded anywhere today. So there is the chance quite a good chance i would say that we won't actually be loaded today for monday but there is a chance we will be i've i've left chet at four o'clock before and um gone straight to tetbury and got loaded there's a lorry coming down i think so i'm gonna just give us some room yeah i got to i uh, got to tetbury for 4 30 and then i've been loaded is that i don't think that pallet truck's coming down here or is he just want to give him some room, if he is. I think he is, because he's waiting for this car. Yeah, I'm just going to give him some extra room. I would appreciate the extra room getting around that corner, so I'm sure he does as well. That's why I was keeping an eye out on him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll we see. We'll see later if we get loaded or not. Clear to the left. Clear to the right. Lovely. See, even though we're going left, I've still got to check to see if it's clear to the left because we've got to be on the other side of the road to make the corner, pure and simple. For those of you who uh, don't know how much room lorry drivers need, it, we need room. <laughs> we can't just um, come out and stay on our side of the road. It's just impossible. Impossible. Anywho, I'm going to crack on. I'll see you in Banbury. Okay, we're in Banbury. We're about a mile and a half away from where we need to be. Get back into the left-hand side lane. 
I take it the M40 is just there. Yeah, it is. Okay. Just trying to think in my head where I am. So, Brad yeah, Bradley's behind me, M40 in front. So, go home, we'll go left at the roundabout, but we're going to go straight over into Banbury and then I think turn right potentially into an industrial estate. I might have been here before, I'm not sure. Um, A361. Just trying to think what lane I need. I am going to get over to go straight over. Normally I'd stay in the, the, the left lane or the middle lane and now to go straight over, but I do think that as soon as I get on the other side of this roundabout, I need to go right, I think. So, um, yeah, we'll stay in this lane. I'm pretty sure, with the place we're going to, I've not been here before, but I'm pretty sure I picked up pallets from somewhere just around the corner from it. Pretty sure. You were, you were, were going to change red for me, weren't you? Yes. Turn green, thank you. Got to watch this van, make sure he's not trying to come all the way around. Nice. Yeah, so we are going to turn right at the roundabout up ahead. Turn right at this roundabout. All clear, all clear, all clear, all clear, all clear, all clear. Lovely. Try and keep our momentum. All clear on the left. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 I remember now. So last time I come up here, we turned left at these lights, I think. Um, I'm sure we turned left at those lights and then we collected pallets from a place just around there, but we're actually going up one more and then turning left. In fact, we're picking up pallets from this place here on the left. It is an RDC. No idea where the pallets are. Yes, I do, they're there, I can see them now. Pallets are there. Right next to like a red way bridge by the looks of it. Just turn left. Come on, mate, stay on your side of the road. I know there's a puddle, but you can't make me stop. Turn left, and then left again in here. Barry Calabute, I think is what it says. I think we need to speak to someone so let's get our tail end off the road lovely um we'll put on the light high vis let's go and see what they say what are you going to do mate now i'm picking up some check pallets from who from you guys Check pallets? Yeah, blue pallets. Oh, blue ones? Yeah, yeah, they're from Chet. Sorry, mate. And what's your name, sir? Luke. Okay, Luke, you know where you go, let him. Uh, straight in. Yeah. Turn right, just follow all the way round to the far corner. I'll let him know that you're coming. Turn right. Yeah, come straight in here. Yeah. Turn right and just follow the road round. It's a one way system. Cool, and they're just over there now. Yeah. I saw them on the way in. Yeah. Sweet, thank you, mate. Thank you. Don't know where he wants us exactly, so we're just uh, give enough room on the left and the right. I think park here would be fine. I don't know if anyone needs to go on the way bridge though. That's the thing because we are blocking it. Oh, they could go round us and then reverse back if they needed to. We'll see. We'll see if anyone comes over to me and tells me to move. But for now, we're here. He said he's going to make a phone call. Let him know I'm here. So I guess we just wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I lost count already. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. They've already pre stacked 15 high, so I think that's how they're going to go on. And there's our forklift driver. Happy days. Right, let's get this loaded. See you in a bit. Okay, we're done. It's just literally just after 12 now, so they got loaded very quickly. We had two forklift drivers on us. Uh, they're 15 high. So we should be good at running at 4.2 metres. I'll just show you the load, look. 
So that's what we're carrying. Happy days. Right, we are loaded. We need to get a break in as well on the way down. Let's put our destination into the sat nav. Yeah, I was right. A couple of um, tanker lorries have come to use uh, this waybridge. Well, obviously, we've been here in the way, so they haven't been able to. But uh, we are off now. It's only an hour and a half down to Chet. So it kind of does depend on just how long we're there for. Um, if we're there for too long, then we won't get loaded for Monday. But if all goes to plan, I say we're only there like an hour. Yeah, and then we should be able to get loaded, hopefully, for Monday, so... That'll be good. That'll be good. I'm just waiting for the taco to load up so I know how much driving time I've actually got left before needing a break. Yeah, so we do need to stop for a break on the way down. Uh, I think the way out is right, isn't it, yeah? Is that the way we come in? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to stop. Not going to stop and get out. <laughs> Lovely. Let's go right out of here. I've got a car on the left. So, yeah, we'll make our way back to Swindon now. Like I said, I do need to stop for a break on the way down as well. Um, so we're, we're probably looking at uh, just after two-ish before we get there. Um... And yeah, we'll go from there. See you in a bit. So this is quite funny. There's a sign here saying that the road is closed, or this lane, but it also says on slip road. <laughs> and everyone's getting over, because <laughs> they think, you know, the lane's closed in here, but it quite clearly says below, on slip road, which is the junction. <laughs> from, uh, for ages, there was someone blocking this lane and everything to stop anyone from coming down. Um, it's just madness. They don't realize it. They don't read it properly on slip road this lane's open on the carriageway <laughs> there's some muppet back there who's trying to block the traffic in like not letting anyone pass thinking he's being clever and actually he's just making things worse oh dear never mind anyway we are still heading back to uh chep and swindon we did stop for a break we stopped at uh share our services on the uh the m40 had a 45 minute break there so we're now heading back to Chepard Swindon, should be there. Well, we're in traffic right now. Sat nav says 14.37, so probably looking at like quarter three, something like that. We'll have to see. Oh, RNS. They, uh, they've recovered me a couple of times. Good guys over there. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm going to carry on. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> OK, you join me in Swindon, more specifically in Blaygrove Industrial Estate. That is what this is called. Is it called? I think it's called Blade Road. Doubting myself now. <laughs> anyway, moment of truth. Are we going to be in for a wait? It is 20 to 3. And, um, yeah, it's about 20 minutes per truck. I'm going to get a bit early. It's not this left, it's the next left. Ugh. Is anyone queuing up on the road to get in? Hopefully not. We don't want to be queuing up on the road. Okay, it's all good. No queuing up on the road, that's a good start. It's a good start, right. How far down are the trucks? That is the secondary question. Ugh. Oh, quite far back. Quite far back. Just here. Um, one, two, I reckon we are about six trucks back. One, two, three, four. Hmm. I reckon there's about five trucks in front of me and then there'll be one inside as well. So, yeah, I think we're in for a couple of hours. Uh, it is nearly quarter to three now. So I reckon we'll be out at quarter five. What's this guy doing? He's shaking his head. The guy in front is shaking his head. I won't include him on camera because he looks quite upset, but he um, <laughs> he did look very happy, probably because he knows it's a bit of a wait from here. 
But never mind. Right, while I'm waiting, what I will do is start unstrapping the load. Um, so then we can just get it tipped off as soon as we get in. So, engine off. Lights off as well to conserve battery. Um, quarter to three. We'll see how long we're here for. Okay, situation report. We've been here now for an hour. It's uh, quarter four now. We are second in line. This one is the next one to go in. We'll be after that. So there'll be one or two trucks inside right now. So on that basis, I am hoping to be out of here in the next sort of 40 minutes. Maybe 45, no later than. So I'm just going to put it about half past four. Hang on. Oh, I'll kick my neck. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're looking about half past four. Maybe, maybe just before half past four. Um... Need to message the boss soon just to ask what we're doing next. It, I can't say it's going to temporary to load. Um, could potentially go to B right and load from there. So yeah, I, I'll message him when I'm actually in and then we take it from there. So two things. Firstly, we are in, it's 10 past four. And we are being offloaded as well while we speak. The bad news is we don't actually have a reference. I've been waiting all this time. I thought I had a reference number to get in. It turns out I don't. I've phoned the boss. He's off at the moment to go do an errand somewhere else. And the laptop is um, in the yard. We've got some beeping going on. Yeah, the laptop's in... Come on, mate. The La oh, laptop's in the yard in the, in the workshop, so he doesn't have access to it while he's quickly gone out to go and pick something up. So I've got to wait for him to come back. But the thing is, They've started unloading me without a reference. I can't go because I need to put the reference into the machine to get paperwork to say I've done the delivery. And I can't put the reference into the machine until they've marked it off on their system, on the forklift. So I can't go anywhere. I've got to wait until I get the reference, but I'm kind of concerned because they've taken it off without the reference, which is unusual. In the past, they, they won't touch it until you've got a reference. So it's a bit strange. Anyway, we've also found out we're going to step back to the yard from here. So, fingers crossed, uh, we'll get this rectified very soon and then uh, crack on back to the yard. Okay, pallets are off. <laughs> he just come over to me and goes, you've got the, the number yet? I said, no, not yet. Um, he said, okay, uh, if, you do, if you haven't got the code in five minutes, I've got to put the pallets back on. It's like, okay, don't bother me. If you've got to put them back on, put them back on. You should have taken them off in the first place. Um, is he putting them on now? I don't know. So we're just waiting for a code. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they took them off. Um, yeah, normally they wait for a code, but he just said uh, they have to put them back on if, it, if I don't have a code. I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Doesn't bother me. I ain't strapping them back up. Um, yeah. <laughs> right, finally got the code. Just give it to the forklift driver. He's clicked it off on his side. So we now need to go and print it off. Over to the printer. Yes. Print, print, and circle. What do you mean it's not available? It's right here. You're in sleep mode, that's why. Print. Lovely. Brilliant. Right, so now we've got paperwork, we can go back in the truck and crack on back to the yard. Right. We have paperwork and uh, everything's been done. Need that. Need that. Let's take the high vis off. Lovely. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of my own fault that uh, we're still here. So <laughs> it's 10 to five now. Uh, what time did we arrive? Isn't it like quarter to two? Was it quarter to three? I think it was quarter to three. Yeah, it would have been quarter to three. Uh, I think, I can't remember, I'll be honest. I think we've been here for two hours. Hang on. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I'm pretty sure it's been two hours. Uh, but it's partly my fault because the whole time I was in the waiting area, I didn't realise I didn't have a reference. Uh, I want to phone my boss up. To be fair, to his credit, he, he said, no, it's my fault. I should have realised I've not given you a reference as well. So, yeah. Oh, this guy here on the right. So we were queued up behind him. 
if you look back in the video, you'll see him. He was shaking his head because uh, he wasn't happy because <laughs> the time that he, well, he knew it was going to be a wait, basically. He knew it was going to be a wait. Gonna say yeah, bye to him. Um, so I was chatting to him. He <laughs> he wasn't happy because um, he couldn't get the printer to, <laughs> to work. Um, he, he was coming out, he goes, bloody printer, blood, bloody thing won't work. Well, why is no one answering? There's no one around. And I was where I was, I was just, I was just sitting there. I said, I said, what's up, mate? He goes, oh, I can't get the bloody thing to print off. I said, oh, I'll come and give you a hand, mate, no problem. So I went, went over, gave him a hand, and he was doing everything right. It was just that right at the end, you'll see that I pressed a yellow circle. He, he didn't realise you had to press that yellow circle. He pre you press print, and you assume it's going to print. But if you don't know any better, then, um, then yeah, it's going to not print, isn't it, unless you press that yellow circle. He didn't realise that, so I showed him how to do it. He now knows for future. Um, and he was very grateful, so always got to help out fella, fellow drivers if you can. That's like the unwritten rule, always help out fellow... There are, well, there are people who won't help out drivers and they just sit in their truck and do nothing, but if I can help, I will. Uh, I've, always, I've always said that and I've always abided by that. If I can help, I will. Now, we could go through town centre, kind of town centre, through Swindon to get to the other side which is where our yard is, but like I said, it's, it's five to five on a Friday. Uh, I don't fancy going through Swindon, so we're going to go onto the uh, motorway via Junction 16, which is literally just here, go down to Junction 15, come off, and there's like three or four junctions down. It's about the same in terms of time uh, without traffic, but it's slightly longer mileage, slightly longer, by about two miles, I'd say. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video. I do appreciate it. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, I've enjoyed making it. I'm going to leave you here. There's nothing else to see. We're going to be in the yard in about 10 minutes. And you've seen the yard loads of times now, the new one included. So I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much for watching. I really, really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Big thanks to all my sponsors. Uh, if you look on my main profile page, you'll see all my sponsors on the left-hand side. And don't forget to go and purchase some merchandise, customised hoodies designed by myself. Uh, and sometimes worn by myself. I, I haven't actually worn one in this video. Someone actually did ask, why do I never wear my, my merchandise? I do, but I sort of cycle through clothes. I don't wear the same hoodie every day. Sometimes I do, but I don't necessarily every day wear the same hoodie. So things, things change. I, don't, I haven't got loads of custom merchandise. I've only got one or two designs myself. <laughs> but um, anyway, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of the day, whatever you're doing. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Drive safe, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.